Hello, this is Zachary Dunn, East Africa Field Director for Tamo, and today I'm going to explain how to install a SIM card in the EM50G data logger from Decagon. In addition to the data logger, of course, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, a SIM card, and the USB cable adapter from Decagon. So what I have here is a standard Tamo installation, the REC1 rain gauge, VP4 temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensor, uh, the pyranometer, and DS2 sonic anemometer. What I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video is that you have already installed your Tamo station and the last thing you need to do is install your SIM card. So what I'm going to do is start by opening the data logger. I can open these clips on the side. Cover swings open. See that all of the sensors are plugged in here to the data logger ports. Uh, you'll also see these four screws next to the batteries. Those have to be removed in order to access the SIM card slot, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll be careful with these screws. They are easy to drop, but difficult to find. Fortunately, okay. Last one is trickiest because as you remove it, the circuit board is freed from the data logger. So you want to just very carefully move that. Okay, so this is free now. I'm going to disconnect the antenna so that I can turn this around. There we go. So the antenna, if you also want to remove it, connects right here to the modem. Just pops right in. Uh, <clears throat> but this is what we're interested in. This is the SIM card slot. And it's fairly simple. The slot slides to the left and folds open. Your SIM card slides in to this tray, like so. Uh, now, SIM cards have a cutaway corner uh, to prevent you from putting them in the incorrect orientation. In this case, the cutaway should be in the top left corner. So you just fold the tray over. There we go. And slide it to the right. Now the SIM card is installed. I'm going to turn this back around. Reconnect the antenna. Which pops in there. disconnected as I put this back. Uh, another thing to note, this cord uh, should go right in this notch that's cut away right here. This goes to the solar panel in the front to recharge the batteries. So push that in and hold it. Then the reverse is true when you're putting the screws back. The first one is the trickiest. I'm going to hold this in place and hold the screw. There we go.
have for the screws tightened. Now what we want to do is run a communication test to make sure the SIM card is actually communicating with the local GPRS network. So we're going to take this USB cable adapter, stereo cable end plugs into the COM port here, USB end plugs into a laptop, I'm going to switch to screen recording here. There we go. So I've opened Ectuo Utility. It's a free download available from Decagon for Windows. So the first thing, once your data logger is plugged in, you just click this connect button. And now you should be seeing some information about your data logger. You have the ID here. Um, if this was installed in the field, we would want to type in the site name as well as the latitude and longitude. It tells you which time zone you're in how often it's reporting. This one is programmed to report every hour. Uh, this is what we want to do right now though, which is the communication test. If you click this button, click test to start. We want to see the strength of the network uh, in this area. Starting a connection, and it looks like everything's good to go. Yep, so we've got a uh, very good connection strength, 5 out of 5 stars. Uh, we want to make sure to note this in our field notes uh, because the strength of the local network can affect the uh, battery level of the data logger. If it has, if it's in poor network area, um, then repeated failed attempts to upload can drain the batteries. So noting this is important because it can help uh, help us diagnose power issues later on. So we're done with the communication test. We can close that. Um, if we wanted to change, let's say we had very poor uh, poor network strength where we are. We might want to configure it to report less frequently um, so that it's not uh, repeatedly failing to upload and drain the batteries. So right now we're reporting every hour. Let's say we wanted to report every other hour instead. You can just uncheck these boxes. And say OK. There we go. Uh, should confirm right here by telling you which hours it's reporting. Uh, conversely, let's say we wanted to report every 15 minutes. Um, you could check all these boxes and then also change this option here to report four times per hour instead of once per hour. And so you'd be reporting every 15 minutes. Um, if you had very good network coverage and you're in an area with very good sunlight as we are in Kenya. Uh, we've tested this and the batteries are, can actually support 15 minute reporting. Um, but you want to make sure that you test this where you are so that you don't end up in a situation where the batteries are being drained and you have to go back to the field to reprogram the logger. But anyway, uh, let's just leave this on every other hour, once per hour reporting. Uh, I have this data logger in my apartment, so I don't actually want to be collecting data right now, but if this is in the field, I could turn our default measurement interval is five minutes, so I could select five minutes. Um, the other thing that's handy here is it tells you how long you have until you start overriding the oldest stored data. Um, so we haven't used this 
data logger at all yet, but um, at five minute uh, recording, a five minute measurement interval, we have about 130 days until we start overwriting the oldest stored data. So what that means is um, if you had, let's say that you installed this in the field and you later had a problem with your SIM card, um, you would want to make sure that you return to the field and diagnose and fix any issues that you have before 130 days so that you don't end up overwriting any data and creating data holes. Um, and this will likely be shorter if um, uh, once, you, once you already have data stored, um, in this case we're 0% in use. Um, but anyway, that's uh, something handy to know. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click apply here to save our changes. And the last thing we can do is click scan. Uh, you want to make sure that your sensors are all reporting plausible data. Uh, in this case, it's inside my apartment, so you're, we're not expecting any solar radiation, significant wind speed, or rain. But um, uh, in the field, you would want to make sure that these are all plausible, um, making sense, so that you don't um, end up with bad data. So that's it. You're done. Now you can click Disconnect. And what we're going to do now um, is just go ahead and unplug this USB cable adapter and fold. You want to fold the, um, the lid on the data logger closed. One thing, when you close this, you want to make sure you're not pinching this cable um, here. You want to make sure it's, you can kind of pull these cables over a bit to make sure that they're getting sealed between these two pieces of rubber. Okay, so that's good. Close these clips. And now you're done. Uh, the last thing you want to do is uh, you want to record all of the metadata from the site before you go. Um, so this is the SIM card number for the SIM card that you installed, including the country code. Uh, the SIM carrier, in this case it's Safaricom. The device ID, uh, you want to record the communication test results that you got, the measurement interval that you programmed, the reporting interval, uh, GPS coordinates, the date that you installed the station, the site name, uh, that could be a school or farm or what have you. Uh, you want to get the contact information for a local contact, so their name, their phone, their email, somebody who is on site reliably who you can call. Uh, in case you need to diagnose an issue with the station. Uh, you also want to take some photos of the site before you go, and you want to lastly note the mount height of the station. Uh, typically we mount on a two meter pole, uh, but this can vary. So anyway, those are the metadata fields you want to make sure you record. And with that, you should be done. Congratulations on finishing your installation.